Hello guys, in this video I'll be showing you guys how to use imitation learning for your machine learning projects. Imitation learning allows you to show the AI what you want it to do. This is very useful for harder things like this one right here. So the goal of this one right here is for you as the agent to go, click, go over here to the button, click the interact button, and then go back over here and get the target. You need to, whenever you're on top of the button, then you need to in, click the interact key for the target to spawn. And you go back over here. But this environment will be will be randomly rotated like crazy and you will have the opposite rotation it's like this and it would just be moving you'll still be moving like this on a global position so i'm gonna go ahead and revert all these back to normal so to do this we need to use imitation learning because it'll be very hard for the ai to do this so if you guys do not know how to set up ml agents i have a link in the description for a video on how to do that so i'm gonna go ahead and show you my project setup here so the first thing is in my agent i have i have my box light to trigger and I have a rigid body so i can detect collision and now my behavior parameters i have my behavior name to be push button i have four observations i have three discrete branches the with branch one to have branch size of three then another three then two these first two are for movement and this last one is for interacting and then i have my decision requester and my push button agent script so i'm gonna go ahead and open up my push button agent script now inside of here you can see i have a few serialized fields these things will just make it so that so that these variables are shown in the inspector for my environment my target and my button and then also my sprite background sprite render this is so i can change the background color if it succeeded i have some private variables for is the button pushed am i interacting right now and number of action received so here i just set the random positions of my target my agent and my button i set a random rotation for my environment then i set the target button and the um, agent their rotation to be nothing then i set target to not be active then i also set the is button pushed to be false and actions received to be zero then collect observations i just collect the observations of my transform that position minus the environment position and then i if the button is pushed then i will send the target position else i'm just going to send the button position and now the on action received here i increment my on my action received by one then i check the interaction thing right here i get my movement right here the reason i have minus one is because it will be a value between zero and two and i want it to be a value between negative one and one so that's why i have it, the negative one right here then i have my movement speed equal to one which is really slow but that's just used so the AI doesn't mess up as much. Then on heuristic, I just use the input that get accesses and get button on collision enter. I use a component right here, a tag component as I like to call it. All it has is nothing inside of it. I can just try get component to see this and it's a better way of than the tag system. And right here, I, if it collides with the target, then I add a reward. I, spe I set the background sprite render to equal green. And then this is my way of checking to see the time reward. So the faster it does it, the more of a reward it gets. And then my wall, I just give it a minus reward and I end the episode. Then on collision stay, that means it has to be with the button. So if it is interacting, if it if the button is not pushed and if the collision is button, then it's going to just add 10 reward whenever you interact with it. And it will set the button, it is the button pushed to equal true and the target um, game object to be active. So that's my setup for the thing. Now we need to um, show, now we need to do the imitation learning. So to do this, I'm going to, dis, I'm going to deactivate all my environments besides my main one. Then I'm going to add a add a component, ML agent, and it's going to be a demonstration recorder. I'm going to click record. I'm going to keep my number of steps to record at zero because if you keep it at zero, it will not have a max. You just go until you stop recording. Then here, I need to give it a demonstration name. I'm just going to have it be push button. And then my directory name is going to be demos. Such so this is going to be push button underscore demo. Just show that's a demo. Underscore demo, just like that. Now I'm going to um, test out my scene. So this is me recording my agent and showing it how to do it. So I'm going to go over to this button. And I am going to click the interact button, which is spacebar, and then go over and get this. Now what you could do is you can just keep on ramming yourself into a wall. But then the agent is not going to know what to do. And you're just confusing the agent. And there's no point in doing that. Because the agent didn't do anything to you to deserve this. So that's not what you want to do. You just want to go click the button and get the pellet. I've gone ahead and recorded something for this. So it will be underneath my demos folder. It's push button agent underscore demo is one I recorded. So I'm just going to delete this one right here. So now what I can do is I need to now add a config file into here. So I already made one, but I want to delete that one. And now we need to make a config file to do that. Right. Just create a new folder, name it config. This is going to have some files for configuration inside of here. Create a new text file and just name it push button agent 
underscore config dot y a m l y a m y a m l stands for yet another markup language and just open this up in notepad at least that's what i like to do and now open up your browser here and i have it right here open up to the documents the documentation for the mlh project and just go to docs and then go under learning environment create new a link for this will be in the description and just go down to the bottom there should be a yep right here just copy all this stuff right here i won't be going over everything in this file right here but i'll be going over some of what you need to put in this file so right here the first thing is the behaviors you need to change this behavior to be whatever the name of your behavior is in my case it's just push button and now the batch size i like to change this to 256 and the buffer size to 1024 so the max step right here is the number of steps before the training will just stop and the summary frequency is the number is the number of steps before it will give you the like the mean of the reward the average reward but that's not really what i am looking for right here what i want to do is i want to go underneath this reward signals right here then make an increment to right here this is going to be gale g-a-i-l and then tab here you're going to want to make more spaces do not use tab that tab would work just fine for this you may be thinking yeah tab it gets you to the exact location but do not use it because it will mess up the formatting of your yaml file but you need strength which will be at 0 0.5 for me and then you also need a demo path this is the path of the dem demo that you made make sure it's all lowercase demo underscore path and then i'm going to just set this to demos slash push button agent underscore demo dot demo and now there's one more that you can use and this is called behavioral cloning um so the gale all it does is it tries to make it tries to get the ai to compete against you and the behavioral cloning on the other hand what it does is it just tries to trick the ai that it's making the same moves as you did in your demo so this also has a strength and a um, demo path so i'm going to copy and paste those here I'm just going to leave the strength and demo path to be the same exact thing. I'm actually going to turn turn these down to point both to point three instead of being point five. Now I'm going to just save this. And now you need to actually do the training, except using the config file. So I'm going to get everything ready for the training by going over here and reverting all my environments. So now you see all my environments here. Go back into my file explorer, go into my base project, and write cmd to open in my command prompt. Then I'm going to activate my virtual environment. If you don't have one set up, I have a link in the description for the video on how to do that. Now I got to write ML agents dash learn. Then I need to write the file, the path for my config file. So in this case, it's just config slash push button underscore config, right? Can you see how I got to check this? Push button agent underscore config dot YAML. I'm just going to copy this actually. You don't have to manually type it. And now you write dash dash run dash IMV equals push button underscore one. So now I'm going to press enter right here. And it's going to give me this right here. And then we're all ready to go. So I'm going to go back into here and press start. And I'm just going to watch the AIs learn what to do. So if I go out here, you can see one of them has already gotten it. Now all the others are going to try to imitate the same exact thing that that one did. So you get it. So I can go ahead and open up this and wait for the summary frequent the summary. See, you can see that the mean reward right now is at 1.667. And you see it's running in the background. Yours might not be running in the background when you have another application open. To change that, you just need to go to File, go Edit, Project Settings, and inside of here, go to Player, go to Resolution, and and this stuff. And then right here, there'll be Running Background. Just toggle that. Yeah, now we're going. The agent is learning real fast. Let's go. So what I like to do is I like to train it for a little bit. Then I will stop the training by pressing Control and C at the same time. Once it says I pretty high reward, like 30, whatever. Go ahead and stop the training now by pressing Control and C at the same time. And then it will save my... Oh, next file and everything. 
But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of actually oh, oh, make this a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to write ML agent dash learn dash dash resume dash dash run dash ID equals and this will be push button underscore two. This will just make the um, training better because as far as I'm aware, it will not use the same config file. And you right now, your your demo will actually kind of slow down the AI. It'll make it a little bit worse. So that's the reason why you want to after a little bit, you want to stop it, then just resume the training just like this. I'm just going to press enter now. So there we go. I just changed it to one instead of two. So it knew which one I was resuming. So now it says press play. And I'm going to press play. And we can watch the AI. So all these logs on the left side right here are the extra reward that it gets from doing it fast. So, see sometimes they do it a little bit slower than other times, but earlier I saw one that was 16. I was never even able to get up to 15. And I just saw 15 flash by. They go by pretty fast since there's nine of them training. They're all getting it green, so. So there you go, the training automatically stopped, and this last one was the highest one that it had gotten at it being a 16, 16.529. The next highest was 16, with 36, not 16, 36.4, no, 514. So now I'm just going to go ahead and go into this folder here and go into my results. And Right here, I'm going to copy this ONNX file, Onyx, and paste it into my folder here. Then I'm going to go ahead and disable all these environments besides this main one right here. I'm going to open it up, go to my agent, and copy and paste this ONNX model into here. Now I'm going to go to my game view and press play, and let's see how good the AI is now. So you can see what it does here is it moves and it clicks the button and it comes back. Now it is really slow because the movement of the agent is just slow in general because that's I have the movement speed at super low value. If you guys have any questions, you guys can ask it on my Discord, send me an email, or just leave a comment down below. I'll have a link in the description to my website so you can send me an email and a link for my Discord. Bye.